Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church on this Sunday, the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. If you are a visitor or a guest this morning, please take a moment to introduce yourselves by filling out a visitor card that's in the pew rack right in front of you. You might have to lift up a little bit on a quilt in order to get a, pew, uh, a visitor card, but please introduce yourselves to us. This morning, a special guest of mine is Dr. Vicki Owens. Vicki, while, you, while you're busy looking for a visitor card, please stand up. Uh, Dr. Owens is a dear friend, and we were kind of figuring out this morning that Lynn and I have known, known Vicki for about 52 years. So it's really a pleasure to have you here. And will you just say in a quick sentence the things you do or have done? Will you just identify yourself in that way? Yes. Oh, thank you. I am a psychologist. We first met when we were all students together at Washington State University. Go Cougs. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I have been in, living in Uganda now for 39 years. Uh, I went as a missionary helping to start a Christian school and stayed on and lectured at the National University for 20 years, helping to establish the counseling profession there, and then worked for the UN. So I've also lived in Khartoum, Sudan, and Bangkok, Thailand. And I now call myself re-retired, because I tried to retire in 2016, but it didn't stick. So now I'm retired again. Good to be with you. Thank you, Vicki. Uh, you can see all these quilts in front of you and around the room. I, we have backpacks as well. And if I remember to bless the backpacks this morning, we'll have a blessing of the backpacks along with the blessing of the quilts, but that will come along a little later in the service. Upcoming in two weeks, the last Sunday of the month, the 27th, Reformation Sunday, so be sure and wear red. Survey, you've, it, you're a great example today of what everyone should do. And uh, let's see what else. On All Saints Sunday, the following week, November 3rd, we're going to have a baptism and also affirmation of baptism for the rest of us. So you'll be sure and want to be here for that. Uh, I will be gone three days this week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, to the Bishop's Convocation in Walla Walla. I expect you to behave yourselves while I'm gone. No crises, please. And uh, I'll see you back uh, on Thursday in the week ahead. Let's see what else is going on. There's a church council meeting coming up on Thursday the 17th. I believe it's at 4 p.m. in the meeting room. It's an open meeting, so any are welcome. Uh, and if there's enough people who come, we'll, we'll meet somewhere else out in the fellowship hall. Uh, the Teen Center is having an upcoming fundraiser dinner on Thursday the 24th from 5.30 to 7. The cost is $20 a plate and the kids are free. That should be in your bulletin. Bags of blessing food bank donations are going to be collected on the 27th. Any more things that I need to say about that? Bags of blessing for anybody that might be representing that here this morning. Okay. We are forming a new praise team. If you'd like to be a part, please contact Karen Marie Moran. And we're looking for some new folks, perhaps, to serve on the Luther Park board. If that's something that is of interest to you, please contact Servi Wilson. Is that okay for me to say that? Perfect. Uh, a couple of liturgical reminders. Let's look on page 10 of the bulletin. You'll see at the bottom of the page that there is a three-part amen. And we sang it last week. It goes like this. Do you want to give me that, uh, Colleen? Just give me the tune. Otherwise, I'm just going to sing it. Amen, amen, 
Amen. Up to the middle of the page. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So when you reach that part, don't say it, sing it. And there'll be organ music to it. We said it last week, okay? I wanted to point that out for you. And what else? Are there any other announcements? Let's quiet our hearts for worship this morning. I invite you to stand as you're able. We gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I was glad when they said to me, with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking God in the name of Jesus to grant us forgiveness of all our sins. If we confess our sins to God, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I said I will confess my transgression to the Lord, and you forgave me the iniquity of all my sin. God our heavenly Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Please cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what lies ahead, we may follow the way of your commandments and receive the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is Praise the Lord, O Heavens. I invite you to be seated. And now, my dear children, I want to show you a new resource that I just love. It is the World Story Bible. And guess what? It's keyed to the lectionary. So over the three-year period, I can tell you stories right from this book that are right in tune with our daily reading. So this morning, our story is about, um, let's see, the rich young ruler. And this story is, begins, everything's possible uh, with God. A man ran up to Jesus. I'm going to take this sticky off. A man ran up to Jesus, and you can see, well, barely see, that this book has lots of nice pictures in it. And he said, teacher, the man panted, I want to live with God forever. How can I be a part of God's kingdom? You know the rules, Jesus reminded him, don't kill anybody. Don't take things that aren't yours. Don't lie. Honor your father and mother. And then the man got excited. I have followed these rules since I was a kid. Jesus looked at the man and loved him. You must do something else too. Just one little thing. Sell everything that you have and give your money to the poor and then come and follow me. The man hung his head and walked away. He didn't want to sell his things. That would be a hard pill to swallow, don't you think? The disciples were surprised. Sell everything, they asked. Jesus explained, it's easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle than for people to enter the kingdom of God if they love their possessions and their money. You have to love God more than you love things. If we do all those things, we will live with God forever, wondered the disciples. It's not about what you do. It's about God, Jesus replied. You aren't in charge of who enters God's kingdom. God is in charge, and with God, all things are possible. With God, the first will be last, and the last will be first. Let's pray. Lord, this is challenging to us. Sometimes you move into our lives and ask for things that are hard for us to give. And yet, we know that we don't have to work. You do these things for us and pour out your lives for us. You empower us 
to do the things that you would have us do. So by your power, make us to be obedient to you. Amen. All right, we continue with our readings. A reading from the book of Amos, the fifth chapter. Amos was a herdsman by profession and prophet by God's call. During a time of the great prosperity in northern kingdom of Israel, the prophets speak to the wealthy upper class. He warns his listener that fulfilling God's demand for, injust, for justice brings blessings while corruption and oppression incur God's wrath. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring the righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you will not drink the wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the greedy in the gate, therefore the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live, and so that the Lord God of hosts will be with you. Just as you have said, hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Psalm 90, verse 12 to 17. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Satisfy us by your steadfast love in the morning, so that we shall rejoice and be glad all our days. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the word of our hands. Prosper our hands. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. As Jesus was sitting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. 
You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these things from my youth. Jesus, looked, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go and sell what you own and give your money to the poor. And you'll have treasure in heaven, then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who's rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals it's impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, look, we've left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, truly I tell you, there's no one who's left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news. Who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age? Houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields with persecutions. And in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last. And the last will be first. The gospel of the Lord. Grace, Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from the triune God. Amen. And I invite you to be seated. As I said earlier, we commonly know this gospel reading this morning as the story of the rich young ruler. And Jesus appeals to the law of Moses for the answer. He rattles off six commandments from the second table of the law, the part that deals with human relationships. And the man answers, yeah, but, yeah, but I've kept all these commandments since I was young. Have you ever corrected your children for saying, yeah, but? <laughs> yeah, but. Jesus waits. He's patient carefully looks at him, scrutinizes him. The text says that he loved him. And so Jesus answers again, <laughs> well, all you lack is this, this one tiny little detail. Go and sell everything that you own, give your money to the poor, and then you'll have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Like I asked a bit ago, would you be able to swallow this answer if Jesus were talking to you? I don't think I would. I, especially at my age, appreciate creature comforts. Plenty of food, drink, warm clothes. In the winter, heat, light, reliable transportation, bills paid, cash on hand, a credit score of 850. All of those things are good. But I know what the rich man knows, that we both fall far short of the bar that Jesus raises for earning one's way into heaven. It's easy to think of God's realm as something that's transactional, to be earned or gained, because many of the Old Testament promises are uh, spoken in if-then statements. Here's an example from the book of Leviticus. If you follow my statutes and keep my commandments and observe them faithfully, then I will give you rains in their season and land shall yield its produce and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. If then, if you do this, God says, I will do that. It sounds so transactional. Consequent to this sort of transactional thinking, the rich young ruler asks, what must I do? It's an all too common knee jerk reaction. What can I do to fix this? We inherently want to fix things. But look how the law of God works just simply to undo us, take us apart. 
First, Jesus says, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And then Jesus says, children, how hard it will be for anyone to enter the kingdom of God. And then he finally says, it's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. He can't be clearer when it comes to earning access to God. One can never do enough, be enough. With mortals, it's impossible. Even ridiculously impossible. Something like threading a needle with a camel. In this brief reading, you can observe the two ideas of law and gospel placed side by side. I think Luther, Martin Luther would have loved this reading, this passage. Echoing his own thinking from the book of, uh, from the formula of Concord, uh, it says that the distinction between law and gospel is a particularly brilliant light that serves the purpose of rightly dividing God's word and properly explaining and understanding the scriptures. And it's so worthwhile to remember this, that it's like you're wearing a pair of eyeglasses when you read God's word. And as you're reading along, sometimes you're seeing law, Sometimes you're seeing gospel. Sometimes you're seeing law. Sometimes you're seeing gospel. And whenever you see law, you're undone. <laughs> wherever you see gospel, you know that God is active and involved for you. And I'm just going to give us a pause. Yeah, by all means, please pray. I was talking about law and gospel. It's a particularly brilliant light, the book of Concord says. It helps us to rightly divide God's word and understand the scriptures. Even Luther himself, when he was writing the 95 Theses, explains in Theses 62 that through the law we have nothing but an evil conscience, a restless heart, a troubled breast because of our sins, which the law points out and does not take away. We, can't, we ourselves can't take it away. The law is a word of destruction, a word of wrath, a word of sadness, a word of grief, the voice of the judge and the defendant, a word of restlessness, a word of curse. On the other hand, Luther continues, the gospel is a preaching of the incarnate Son of God given to us without any merit on our part for salvation and peace. It's a word of salvation, a word of grace, a word of comfort. A word of joy, a voice of the bridegroom and the bride, a good word, a word of peace. Therefore, seeking to gain access to God by human means always ends in failure, doesn't it? But access provided by God himself is a gate that cannot be shut. With God, everything is possible. Because God alone does what it takes. According to the law, we have to do it. We have our part to play. According to the gospel, God through Christ does it for us, independent of all that we can do. And we're helpless, aren't we? The sooner that we learn that, the better. Lord, I can't do it on my own. I can't live on my own. Don't know how to deal with this thing that's happening in church on my own. But you love, you love each and every person here. You love that our, our sister who is taken to the hospital. You love her. And we just put her in your hands. That's all we can do. You can hear Jesus' words to the rich man in the demands of the law. If you want heaven's treasure, he says, go and sell everything and give it all away and then you'll have treasure. But his final instruction is, come and follow me. And those words are pure gospel. Let me lead you. Let me guide you. 
Let me do it for you. Let me show you the way. It says Jesus loves him. And so Jesus issues the same call to this young man as he did to the other 12. Come and follow me. In other words, Jesus is inviting this man to come into and be part of his closest inner circle. He's giving this rich young ruler the same call that he gave to the rest of the disciples. Come and follow me. But the man could not let go of his wealth. Peter says to Jesus, look, we let go of everything and we follow you. So Jesus replies with words that are filled with promise. On this account, on, you, on the account of you letting go and letting God do it, you'll gain a hundredfold of everything you need in this life and then the next houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, fields, persecutions. I think Jesus is previewing for these disciples things that will unfold upcoming in the book of Acts. The persecutions that fell out to be in Jerusalem caused church leaders and their faithful followers to scatter out into the world where the message of the gospel, gospel could be heard by everyone and where, in fact, they did take upon themselves new housing, new protection, new fierce spiritual family members, new livelihoods. I also like to think of this hundredfold blessing as more than just literal houses and families and fields. Jesus is promising something better than. Try reading it this way. There's no person who's ever left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or fields for my sake and the sake of the good news who will not receive in this age a hundredfold better than houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, fields, children. That makes more sense to me. All right, back to this rich young ruler. Jesus' intent seems to be for him to go away grieving and sorrowing, that these emotions might awaken in him a true repentance and insight to the truth of grace. We call this purpose and of repentance and faith the second use of the law. According to Luther and Lutheran teaching, God's law is good for us in three different ways. First, second, and third. First use of the law, second use of the law, third use of the law. In a general way, the law brings order to human society and provides security and protection to a rascal planet that would otherwise spin off into madness and chaos. This is the first use of the law. Skipping over use number two and going on to use number three, the third use of the law, it teaches us practical ways that we can know better how to love and serve our neighbor. Third use of the law. But in the middle, the second use of the law. It's the one that shows up in today's reading. The law convicts us of our sins, and our sinfulness so that we may come to repent and believe the gospel. All right, what does this, all, all this stuff that I'm talking about, what does it even mean for us? It means that we're Lutheran. It means we find our identity in some part or all parts of this passage this morning, like the rich young ruler. We identify with craving for things that we don't have. How can I get more? How can I inherit eternal life? Well, also like the rich ruler, we identify with grieving over deep felt inadequacies and losses. We regret difficult, poor choices that we think we have to make. Like Jesus in his teaching, we identify with the God who does the impossible for us, on our behalf, despite our sin. And like Peter, we identify with a freedom and hope of being blessed by God a hundred times more than we could even ever imagine or think. This is what I, it means when we take on that label, Lutheran. To be imperfect and saved at the same time. To be saved by grace with no special prayer to pray, no state of mind to achieve, no good deed to perform. Although we're saved by grace through faith, we still live in a tension. 
On the one hand, we know we're sinful. On the other hand, we, know, we trust that we're forgiven and that God is at work in us. Therefore, grace expresses God's unconditional love. And in response to that love and that grace, we're set free gratefully and lovingly toward God, toward our neighbor, toward each other. And there's where I'm going to put my amen. I invite you to take a moment and share with one another what you hear the Spirit saying to you this morning through God's Word. Our hymn of the day this morning, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. Let us confess our faith by responding by, uh, excuse me, let us respond to God's worth by confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And I invite you to be seated. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all creation.
God of our ancestors, we give thanks for the church in all times. May we listen for the prophets of this age who bear messages that stir the church toward renewal and justice. God of grace. Creator of every creature on earth, direct our lives toward the renewal and sustaining of cattle, birds, and the air of the field. Sorry. Com a prayer. Compassionate God, embolden the church to seek all who are lost. Clothe those who are naked and mend what is broken. May we be generous bearers of your internal love. God of grace. Sustaining God as we approach harvest time, we pray for farmers field workers, and those who process crops. Keep us mindful of environmental threats to the nourishing food that feeds the world. God of grace. Steadfast God, inspire world leaders to share resources and work collectively to end global poverty, starvation, and preventable disease. Direct us to seek justice and equity, that all may live in peace. God of grace. Loving God, we pray for those who are afflicted, tormented, grieving, oppressed, and lonely. Deliver the strength of your love and compassion to all who need it today. God of grace. Generous God, we give thanks for the First Nations and tribes who inhabited this land, we lament the harm done by colonization. Call us to deeper appreciation and care for the languages, rituals, and history of all indigenous people. God of grace. We pray for those who are named in our prayer list and for those whom we also now name either aloud or in our hearts. Ever living God, we rejoice to be heirs of the eternal life made real in Jesus' death and resurrection. We give thanks for saints of all times and places first and last, who still inspire us to faithful living, God of grace. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace and freely give, both now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you all. Please share God's peace with one another. Anniversaries that we're celebrating. Isn't that a song like that? <laughs> yeah. Follow on me. <laughs> Any birthdays? Any anniversaries? I can look them up. I have a list. Our anniversary was Friday. Oh, congratulations. And you were celebrating where? In Hawaii. So. <laughs> Aloha. Yeah, you, Aloha. You, you guys are past prayer, right? Yeah, I know.
<laughs> oh no, let's bless you in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to turn to my paramedics is her neighbor. Okay. Talk to me then afterwards too. Okay. I am adding that we conclude our time of the peace by singing these lines. continue with our offering. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. In 
It is indeed right, our dear Huti, and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of our faith. Christ is risen. Come again. We thank you, gracious God, that you send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be for us, the, sanct the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Father in heaven, may your name be hallowed, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as in heaven, on earth as in heaven. Now give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins and Come to the banquet, all is now ready. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. You may be seated.
I invite you to stand as you're able. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood now strengthen and preserve you to eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As you're standing, I'm going to come down there. Why don't you go ahead and lay your hand on a quilt that's nearby and let's, let, let's bless these and bless these backpacks this morning. I think that they're going out locally and they're going out all over the world. You never know where Christ's hands and feet through you are going to show up next. Lord, we're so thankful for these gifts that you have allowed us to create in this place. And we bless them. We ask that they would be ministers, representatives of you. And the people who bring them would represent you as well. Comfort, strengthen, guard, guide, protect, feed, clothe. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. This is the mission that we share in Christ's name. To praise God, nurture faith, and serve all. Our sending him, O Jesus, I have promised. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be God. Go in peace. Come to coffee. Bring a quilt. Bring a quilt. Bring a quilt.